Hello, I'm Atuba Judge, and I'm so glad to be bringing God's word to you today. Hey, today is Friday, not just Friday. Today is the last day of the month of September. Wonderful, praise God. Now, I don't know how this month has been for you, but I know one thing. It would not take God 24 hours to change your life. I'm telling you the truth. It will just take a split second. What do you mean a split second? All you need is for the word of God to come to you. See that now? And, and you receiving that word and that's all you need and everything will change. Praise God. Yeah, it doesn't matter what you're going through. It doesn't matter what you're facing. It doesn't matter how terrible life has been for you. Here is just the secret of life. If only you will receive his word, it will quench every darkness. It will quench every darkness. And that's what I've been sharing with you. Now, before we go into today's broadcast, I, I, I would like us to call in and request for our daily bread. Join me right now and declare, say, Father, I receive right now my daily bread. It's coming to me now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Now, I pray over you that everything that belonged to you in the month of September that you have not received, I pray today by the supernatural hand of God, let these things come to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because God is a faithful God, let nothing that belongs to September go beyond September. So I pray today, if it was by your own negligence, if it was by your own ignorance that you missed those things, I speak, for, I speak mercy over you. Let the Lord show you mercy and let his truths concerning those things be made manifest. Receive his word now in your spirit. And be guided to receive your inheritance. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise God. Now, I'll, I'll share something with you from Ephesians chapter 6. Where it says, For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Now, he didn't stop there. I've explained that to you, what we're dealing with. He says, therefore, take up the whole, not some. He says, take up the whole, the whole, the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. He says, the whole armor of God. You don't take some of the armor of God if you want to stand firm in the evil day some of the armor of god will not do the job you've got to take the whole armor armor and as i begin to share these things with you i pray that you open your hearts and find wisdom that will give you direction in this message in the name of the lord jesus christ now he says take on the whole armor of god that you may be able to stand so and haven't done all to stand. He said, that means there is a doing. You don't sit back there and say, oh God, if you want me to stand, you will make me stand. No, there is some work to be done on your part. He says, haven't done all to stand. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Verse 14 here, he says, stand therefore, haven't girded your waist with truth. Oh, King James calls it your loins, your waist. Why? Because that is where life comes from. Your loins. Your loins is your depth. When somebody wants to shout the loudest, he gathers his loins. 
See that now? He gathers his loins. Because from there, you can push strength. So he says, let what is in your loins be what? Truth. Truth. You can't, you can't engage in this battle toying around with darkness. Toying around with lies. Lies is associated with darkness. I've shared that with you earlier in the month. Darkness and lies go together. Because when you are in darkness, most of the things you're going to walk by will be a lie. Your assumptions will be incorrect. Your conclusions will be wrong. Why? Because you are in darkness. So every sight you use in darkness will be a lie. So the first thing he says you should gather is your loins and make sure, he says, is guarded with truth. That's why I said the first thing you should think about is what is i told you this anytime you want to pray your first prayer point should be lord what do you want me to pray what do you want me to say about this situation why because number one in dealing with life is light is light because when you have light you will do things in truth In darkness, maybe you're hungry and everywhere is dark. And then you're trying to use your hand to find stuff you can find on the table because there was no, there's no source of light. And you are able to touch some kind of food. Now, do you know it is possible to believe that that's the only food that was in that place? And then you eat it thinking that, ah, I've eaten the only food that was in this place. But do you know when the light comes on, you may just discover on the other side of the room, on the other side of the kitchen, or the other side of the dining, there was a better food that was kept for you. But because you didn't know and you were in darkness, what you found, you thought it was the best. And that's a lie. So when he says having your loins gathered about with truth, he is telling you be filled with every light where that thing is concerned. Every decision you want to take in life, don't ever take a one-sided decision. Every decision you want to make in life, you want to take in life, make sure you are, your heart is flooded with light. And also, remember, there is the true light. There are different lights, but then there is the true light. It is only the true light that will help you walk in truth. The true light is God's light. So when you're dealing with matters, with every issue you're dealing with, you want to invest, so people come to you and they're trying to tell you all kind of investment, there is the A side, the B side, and then there is the God side. The A side is, okay, the person who wants you to spend your money to invest, he's asking, he's doing everything to get your money. There is the B side, the person who, who just feels that you shouldn't spend your money. Okay, why don't you want me to spend my money? Oh, because these people can just be fraudsters and all those things. That's the B side. But then there is also the God side. The God side is the side that carries purpose and truth. See that now? So it is when you look at it from the God side that you will be able to tell now it is the true light. So it says, have your loins gathered about with truth. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And having on the breastplate of righteousness. First, your loins from which you produce life. Your law is from which you speak. That is where you say from. I told you, you speak with your mouth, you say with your heart. If your loins are guarded, are guarded with truth, you will always say the truth. No matter the situation, you will always speak truth. 
Now, when you begin to speak truth, because your loins will affect your mouth. When you begin to speak truth, you are walking in what he said. Having on the breastplate of righteousness. What is the breastplate of righteousness? Seeing to it that there is no condemnation, no self-imposed condemnation that is in your heart. How do you see that? How do you see to that? When you walk in the truth and see to it that no matter what, you say the truth at all times. Now, when you have spoken the truth, whether you, you whether it's something that is hurting, it's something that you, you the moment you have spoken the truth, you know how it is. They say when you say the truth, you don't have to remember what you said the last time. That's what it's talking about walking in righteousness. Righteousness is saying what you mean and standing for what you mean. And before you can say what you mean and it's truth, the light has to be on it. So when he says having on the breastplate of righteousness, he is talking about the actions of righteousness that you do and which mainly is controlled by your speaking. What you have said, is it the truth? What you have said, is it right? Is it righteousness? Yes, it's righteousness. So I fear no condemnation. You see that now? This is how we bring light to our world. First, Light is given to us. The Lord shall arise upon you. So I see things first from God's perspective. And when I see things from God's perspective, the next thing I do, I begin to speak according to the truth that I see. Thank you, Holy Spirit. He say, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, Make sure what you are standing on is the thought and mentality to bring peace. God is not sending you to go cause trouble anywhere. He is sending you to bring peace. You remember, Jesus actually said, blessed are the peacemakers. They shall be called the sons of God. Why are they peacemakers? Because number one, they see from a different perspective. They see from God's perspective. And when they see from God's perspective, oh, thank you, Lord, the Holy Spirit. When you see from God's perspective, your decisions will be different. Your actions will be different. Your words will be different. So you find a man or a woman whom everybody is condemning. You remember the story. I have used this story many times in this, this month. You remember when they brought the woman caught in the act of adultery, right? And, and, and Jesus, they asked Jesus, what do you say? And Jesus, first of all, was trusting God for light. And by the time God showed him the light concerning the situation, he asked the question. See, the light he saw affected what he said. Anyone without sin among you should cast the first stone. Because when he looked in the light, he saw even those that were accusing the lady are worse than her. He said, okay, anyone, without, anyone among you without sin should cast the first stone. And they all left. And then Jesus turned to the woman and said, where are your accusers? He said, they've all gone. Nobody accused. He said, no. Then he says, neither do I condemn you. Meaning, the, the heart of Jesus was for peace. He was ready to demonstrate peace where that woman was concerned. He was ready to bring her to the place of peace. That's why he says, neither do I condemn you. He said, can any of you convince me of sin? Can any of you? What a challenge. So he says, your feet should be shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Every attitude of yours, every action of yours should be geared towards bringing peace. And he says, Hallelujah. Above all, taking the shield of faith. Taking the shield of faith. Why do we let the light shine before we take that decision? 
Why do we see to it that we walk in righteousness? Why do we see to it that we are all about peace? Because of this shield of faith. Anything. He says, he says, oh, I love this. He says, thank you, Lord Jesus. Above all, taking the shield of faith, with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. The fact that you're walking in righteousness, the fact that you're walking in the light, doesn't stop Satan from throwing his fiery darts. So they just keep coming. Are you sure you've done this thing right? Are you sure? You know, he, Satan is, the, is the, he's a blackmailer. He would always want to condemn you. He would always want to bring things to your mind that will condemn you. So he says, having the shield of faith. So you keep your mind on what God is going to say to you. You don't, you don't wake up and say, oh, see what the nonsense I've done. I'm condemned. In fact, I don't think there's any hope for me. You don't say that. That's fiery darts. Go before the Lord. I say, Lord, what would you have me do? And whatever he tells you to do at that time, get up and do it. That's your shield of faith. That's your shield of faith. Faith is your response to what God has said. Faith is your response to what God has said. So in any situation, wait for the word of God to come to you. It's your shield. Why are you doing what you're doing? Oh, two days ago, the Lord spoke to me that this is what I should do. Why are you in that place? Oh, the Lord sent me here. The Lord commanded me to come here. Why are you taking up that job? Oh, two years ago, I was praying and God says, at the right time, I would walk in this place. And now there's an opening and someone called me. So I knew. See, it's connected to the word. That's your shield. Every action of yours must be connected to what God has said to you. Your choices in life, your decisions in life must be connected to your dealings with God, to, be, to, some time, to something that God has said concerning you. Every action of yours, I repeat it, every action of yours must be connected with a word from God to you. So now you see, if you don't receive God's word, you can walk in this light. You can walk by this armor of God. Then he says, And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Take the helmet of salvation. Now, now this, is, this is where your thought process comes in. You don't have time thinking wrong thoughts. You are saved. Let that get into your head. You don't have, you, you are saved. You are a child of God. You are born again. You have been saved. So, so sometimes when your mind is flying and wandering away, remember, hey, I am saved. I don't have time for all that darkness anymore. No, I am saved. I don't have time to be in broke. No, I am saved. That should get into your head. Now, you know what I mean by that should get into your head? Think this thought. I'm saved. So everything I do must be from that angle. That's the helmet of salvation. And then he says, and the sword of the spirit. Now, you know, when you see a battleman with his sword, he defends himself and with the sword, he makes advancement. So it's your weapon. It's also your armor, part of your armor. Getting and forging ahead by God's word. That's what he told Joshua. You shall make your way prosperous. By what? By the word that you have gathered in your heart. Don't take that step until the sword of the Spirit has been given to you where that thing is concerned. No matter how you think you know what you're doing, hear me, don't take that step 
until you have received the sword of the spirits, which is the word of God concerning that. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Our time is up. But hey, listen. Tonight, by 12 midnight, we are beginning our fast for the 1st of October. It starts 12 midnight today. Now, the Zoom link is on your screen. Copy it and join us in that meeting because we are praying via Zoom. We are praying via Zoom. And so we're praying at every watch that is in a three hours interval. So at the first prayer meeting is going to be by 12 midnight and then also by 3 a.m., then 6 a.m., then 9 a.m., then 12 noon, then 3 p.m., 6 p.m. And the last watch, which will be the last prayer meeting, will be by 9 p.m. Don't miss this for anything. This is a special prayer meeting especially those of us that are in Nigeria and from Nigeria. This is a special prayer service, prayer meeting throughout the 1st of October. So don't miss it for anything. I'll be looking out for you tonight. God bless you. If you have any problem, please contact us before the prayer meeting starts and we'll be able to help you. God bless you. Have a fruitful day.